We're all familiar with Mark Weiser's vision of ubiquitous computing as computers fading into the woodwork. Ubiquitous video is simply cameras fading into the woodwork. It's cameras everywhere. We can achieve many of the properties of ubiquitous video anytime we have a cluster of networked cameras out in the real world broadcasting their video feeds back to a central source. The question is how we can use these streams. Can they perhaps be used to support remote exploration? Looking at this video clip, you can see that with only four streams, the user is already overwhelmed with information. How will we possibly make sense of this data? What we really want to do is immerse the user in the environment, to have them be able to move from camera to camera as if they were walking. Reality fly-through makes this possible. Once we can do this, there are a number of potential applications we may be able to support. Consider, for example, first responders equipped with head-mounted wireless video cameras who continuously broadcast their location, orientation, and what they see as they fan out through a disaster site. Central Command can virtually explore the site by viewing these video feeds and thereby acquire much-needed situational awareness. Virtual tourism could be supported by maintaining a database of travelers' photos and video clips. Combine these with live video feeds and a virtual tourist could take a stroll through the streets of Bangkok, for example. Reality fly-through is effective with indoor spaces as well. A real estate walkthrough is one possible application. The freedom of movement that the user enjoys contrasts with the stationary panning quality typical of panoramic displays. Imagine being able to visualize your drive when you download driving directions from your favorite mapping software. How about being able to watch a football game from any angle at a stadium? What if we could support virtual mobility for the disabled and elderly? Virtual shopping, My Day Diaries, the possibilities are endless. To make remote exploration feel like local exploration, the users should be able to move themselves naturally through the environment, choosing where to go and how to get there. The users should see an accurate rendering of the environment from any point in space. This suggests the need for an abstraction. We would like to have a camera or a view at every point in orientation in space. There are a number of ways that we could do this. We could take the telepresence approach and move the camera through the environment, but how can we move quickly to another position or navigate around obstacles? Instead of moving a camera, we could assume the availability of an infinite number of cameras and move by choosing which camera's image to show at any point in time. More realistically, we could have a lot of cameras, and then novel views could be constructed by interpolating from the real images. These techniques, sometimes called telereality, require precise knowledge of the camera locations and of the optical properties of the camera lenses. We could instead pre-acquire a model of the environment, and then for every camera that exists in the environment, a corresponding projection can be made onto the model. What happens, though, in dynamic environments where models cannot be obtained a priori? We would like to create the illusion of a camera existing at every position and orientation in space, but the environments that we want reality fly-through to work in present some challenges. The camera density is likely to be low because of limited network bandwidth, and the environment is dynamic, with not only people and objects moving, but also possibly the cameras themselves moving. The environment is also uncalibrated. We have just seen that it's not reasonable to expect that the geometry of the environment can be known a priori, and our location sensors are going to be inaccurate. Finally, if we're supporting something like disaster response, the data needs to be viewed live and in real time. Command and control at a disaster site isn't interested in viewing the scene as it looked yesterday. They need the data now. We will now see how reality fly-through creates the illusion of infinite camera coverage while dealing with the challenges of ubiquitous video. The first thing we need to do is simplify three-dimensional space. If we know the locations and orientations of the cameras in the field, we can place a representation of this camera at a corresponding position in virtual space. We can then project the camera's image onto a virtual wall that is located some distance away from the camera. When the user's virtual position matches that of the camera's, the entire screen is filled with the image. This approach results in a two-dimensional simplification of three-dimensional space, where near objects are pushed out onto the image plane and distant objects are pulled into the image plane. A transition between cameras is achieved by moving the user's location from the point of view of the source camera to the point of view of the destination camera, while the virtual walls are displayed in perspective. The overlapping portions of the imagery are blended using an alpha blend. Transitions are essentially using motion as a substitute for infinite cameras. They are so effective because humans are very adept at committing closure. What this means is that we are good at making sense of incomplete information and our visual cortex does this every day when it conceals from us the fact that we all have blind spots in our eyes. Transitions also reveal, rather than conceal, inaccuracies in the stitching. 
inaccuracies that occur not only because of our two-dimensional simplification of space, but also because the locations and orientations of the cameras are inaccurately measured. It turns out that these inaccuracies actually help the user commit closure, so it is important that they be revealed. Transitions provide users with other cues as well. Motion indicates the direction of travel, and the constant speed of a transition makes it possible for users to use duration as a direct indication of the distance that was traveled. When we have non-intersecting camera views, imagery from other cameras can be used to fill in the gaps. How do we choose which cameras to display, though? There are no obvious choices along this path. If we just show them all, there's too much data and the users don't have time to commit closure. The trick is to limit what is displayed by only selecting new images when the current image is no longer in view. Transitions should at least be visible for one second to give users time to commit closure. Let's see how we can apply the reality fly-through abstractions to dynamic environments, where the video feeds are live and the cameras are moving. If we do not specifically account for the fact that the cameras may be moving, we wind up with disorienting situations like this one, where the destination camera rotates 180 degrees before the transition is completed. There are two things we need to do in order to handle dynamic environments. First, the paths to the destinations need to be dynamic so that we actually acquire the destination. And second, the cameras need to be selected just in time. The naive approach would select the three green cameras. Instead, we need to just select one camera at a time as we move along our dynamically adjusting path. To reduce the disorienting back and forth sway caused by trying to acquire a moving target, we first move to where the camera was at the start of the transition, and then quickly zero in on it. To reduce the many dimensions of movement that interfere with closure, we pause the live video feeds whenever they are visible during a transition, and then catch up to real time by playing back the acquired video feed at increased speed. We have shown how Reality Flythrough can harness ubiquitous video cameras to support remote exploration of a real-world environment. We are able to create an illusion of infinite camera coverage despite the harsh conditions of dynamic, uncalibrated environments. We achieve this by using motion as a substitute for infinite cameras and showing the optimal images at every location. Low camera density is, and will continue to be, a problem that hampers efforts to use live cameras for remote exploration. We overcome this problem by archiving frames from the live video feeds, treating these images as if they were static cameras in the environment. Over time, a three-dimensional map of an area is generated, allowing for full exploration of the space, creating the illusion of infinite camera coverage and thus making the users feel like they can navigate to anywhere within the space. Reality Flythrough is still in the early stages of development. Much work is yet to be done. We have, however, demonstrated a compelling vision of what is possible.